Hi everyone, it's Hannah Catherine Brand. Welcome back to my craft room, storage room, office, music room, litter box room. <laughs> Everything that happens in here, we're in a little bit of a transition period right now, so this will be cleaned up quickly. But what I really am so excited to share with you today are all of my works in progress, and I need your help in deciding what to work on next. I have talked about in previous videos how the end of the year is coming so much faster than I can even comprehend. And I am a creative project manager actually by day, that's my day job. So um, I am all about prioritization and getting my projects in a good spot so that I feel good to one, close them out, two, do things in a strategic order of operations, and also three, just stay organized along the way. I'm one of those type A crafting people that are just seem to be non-existent sometimes. <laughs> But anyway, so I am so excited to share with you the projects that I currently have that I have started on, or uh, actually a few might not be started on, uh, and we'll get into those and get your feedback on whether or not I should start them or not. But ultimately, I have come to the, the conclusion that I'm not going to finish everything that I have in my clear project bins by the end of the year and so i need to decide what it is i want to do next because i know there are some amazing fabric lines coming out this fall as well as for 2025 and i want to make space for all that beautiful new fabric and all of the beautiful projects that i know are going to be on my to-do list if they aren't already there so please be an active participant in this video i want to hear your thoughts i also have a few different quilt tops that i need to send to the long arm quilter and would also love your perspective on which one should go there first because as much as I wish the quilting bu budget was unlimited it is not at this point in time so I do need to be discerning about what I'm spending my valuable crafting money on and what needs to be saved for future projects so with that said let's jump into these projects I'm so excited to tell you about them share my progress and then get your feedback on what we're going to be doing next here are my project bins that I keep on top of this little tower. And these are the projects that we are going to be taking a look at today to figure out what bins we are going to empty out before the end of the year. Because as much as I like to think I could do all of it, I know I just can't. So I have to prioritize. First bin is my Spangled Quilt. This is Spangled by Kim Deal. And it's not a super big quilt. It finishes at 60 and a half by 60 and a half inches. So a big enough quilt without being too, too much. But I am making this out of my scraps, specifically my Camille Ross Kelly scraps. So since she is a favorite of mine, I wanted to do a quilt that featured uh, a bunch of her collections in the same thing. So I actually have, I forgot how far I got on this. I have a row done and gosh, this stayed really beautifully pressed. So it's looking, well, it did until this point. So it's looking good. And it's so fun to see all these different collections that I have just loved making different things with and then now getting to see them all in the same quilt, almost quilt top. The real nice thing about this is for those of you who know about my lost designer mystery block of the month from 2023, you can see I have some fabric from that in here. So the legacy carries on. But yeah, so I have this first row done and just looking at the pattern, I'm actually probably not too, too far from being done. So there are one, two, three, four, five. So there's five rows. Okay, I'm a little further than I thought. So I still have four more rows to go on this. This one's a little bit more time consuming just because cutting from scraps takes a lot longer than cutting from like fabric that you buy and you know is the perfect requirements because you can't be as efficient depending upon how big your scraps are i'm using all sizes so but you can't be as efficient with your cutting so this is a little more time consuming than i realized but it does look like i've made some progress 
and this looks all very neat so that is the first option again i'm loving this quilt but i don't know you let me know if you think it's worth the time it's going to take to finish this up because i do think i might be able to finish up some of the other ones a little bit faster and then i could finish multiple quilts by the end of the year but then do i want to do that i don't know that's why i'm here today soliciting your opinions because i think your opinions are going to be incredibly helpful to me i'm actually looking at all of my whips and <laughs> realizing that maybe all of them are going to be fairly time consuming just because um that's the type of quilt i like i love a complicated looking quilt so there we go this is i believe just my fabric stash yep that is remaining from Lori Holt's Mercantile Sampler. And I actually have my blocks and the pattern stashed away. So I will get that for you so you can see more of what my progress looks like and how far I have to go. Here are my Mercantile blocks. And these ones actually, they stitch up fairly quickly. And they're so pretty. I love them. I got really excited. Well, here, I'll show you that in a minute. Let me just show you the rest of my standalone blocks. I've made fairly good progress on this one. Oh, this was, this is my replacement background for this. I need to unstitch this because I trimmed this down too much. I got really excited thinking this was another block, <laughs> but this is probably the incorrect orientation that I'm showing you, but I just get really excited as I sew my blocks. And um, so I like to, if I can, sew them into rows as I go. I get really impatient when I finish all of my blocks because I get so excited to finish the quilt. Whoops, it's upside down. Um, so that's why if I can sew it together as I go, I will. And this one's perfect to do so. So yeah, I remember making this the birthday cake block. And this was a sew along that I got tragically behind on. This has been done for like months, <laughs> but not with me. I love this one. The colors on this are so pretty. And this is typically not my style, but I just really liked this quilt and I'm, I'm a sucker for a sampler quilt. So yeah, that's my progress on Mercantile. It's gonna be a pretty big quilt. And obviously lots of variety, it's lots of fun. This is just, this is a great quilt. I honestly think the reason I'm procrastinating on this one is I enjoy it and I just like, I don't want to finish it. <laughs> that's, that's my thought. Also, I do have backing for this one. This is the backing. I think this one's really pretty and I felt like the images online didn't do it justice, but I also love how it's like an homage to cross stitching. So for those of us who quilt and cross stitch, how fun is that? This is the uh, set that came with the sew along. So sometimes if I don't like it, I'll just get my own, but I liked this one. So I thought I'd give it a shot. Jumping in here real quick to tell you about Garden Sampler, the debut original quilt pattern from Edie's Craft Room. If you haven't already seen it, I would love for you to head to my website, ediescraftroom.com, to check it out and also to shop if you're interested in purchasing it. It is available both as a digital download, a PDF, and then also as a physical paper pattern copy. I am so grateful to those of you who have already purchased this pattern. This is such a fun 72 inch by 92 inch quilt that is perfect for confident beginners. It features traditional piecing and the blocks are large so it comes together quickly and it's a lot of fun to make. All right, let's jump back in to the quilts. Now my Barn Star Sampler quilt, I actually did a video on fairly recently because my fabric choices for this one are red white and blue so i did a video on the fourth of july for this because i thought it would be appropriate so this is actually 
the block that I made in that video. It's massive, as you can see. And I think once I make one more of these, I will be done with the biggest size blocks. So I'm hoping that means some of the smaller ones are gonna go just a little bit faster because the big blocks in this quilt are a little more intensive. Like for example, I've already made this one, thank goodness, but there's a lot of piecing involved in that. Um, whereas something like this is a little bit more simple, but um, yeah, this one's, this one's taking a bit. And I also said in that video that this one is taking a little bit more time as well because instead of just following the pattern exactly like I usually do in terms of my fabric requirements for this one I just found a bunch of fabric that I liked and I'm just kind of coloring it as I go so that also just takes a little more time because it's not just you know referring to some decided upon patterns or excuse me, decided upon fabric for the pattern. This is just a duplicate of that last block you saw. And then here's that block that I was saying. Definitely took some time, but it, gosh, it's so pretty. This is such a beautiful quilt and I love this fabric. I believe this fabric is the Sabrina line by Wyndham Fabrics and it is just gorgeous. So really happy with my choice to use it, but it's just, taking a little bit and to be honest these blocks are so big I could probably make a pretty decent quilt top with just the blocks I've made so far but I want to make this barn star sampler quilt so badly because I just think it's gorgeous and I love all of the different stars and the variety so I'm gonna finish it but I don't know what are your thoughts also because the rest of the year at the time of filming is going to be fall and the beginning of winter. I am one of those people that I like to do my seasonal work during the season I'm in. So I really struggle to work on like Christmas when it's May. Um, I can justify Christmas at the end of the year. I usually wait until like October, November just because Christmas is ahead of me, but Chris, if I feel like in the calendar Christmas is behind me, I just struggle. I struggle to do it. It just doesn't feel right. I, I'm, I'm very much someone who wants to be present in the season I'm in. So that's why I worked on this one around the 4th of July, but I would hate for it to just continue to sit in this bin until next 4th of July. So let me know your thoughts. This is a gorgeous one one of my all-time favorite looking quilts just based on the pattern. So consider this one as another contender. Oh, also on this one, I do not have any backing picked out for this and it's also possible I might need to buy more fabric. So keep that my, in mind in your pro con list on these quilts. And I think I forgot to mention that the same, I actually do have the backing for Mercantile by Lori Holt. Um, but I do not have backing for Spangled. So I'll keep going through that. Um, I was thinking for Spangled, it would be cool to just do like, I don't know, Camille has so many beautiful big florals. So maybe I could do one of those, but also that's like all of my quilt backings. And I've always wanted to put a cuddle on one of my own. I've only ever done that on baby quilts. So maybe that scrappy quilt might be an opportunity to do that. This is the Kona Solid 2024. I think it's a block of the month. Hold on, let me pull my calendar because I have the calendar too. It's actually stuck and I'm afraid I'm gonna take it out of the wall <laughs> if I show it to you. But yes, it's the Kona Cotton Solids, their block of the month for 2024. Um, they are just so fun to work with and just like look at that beautiful rainbow. Whoops. Yeah, I, these are just so visually appealing. I remember when I got the box of these, I was just so excited. How pretty is that? You almost don't want to even cut into them. You just want to like display them for their beautiful colors. But I actually, the funny thing about this one is I started off like way ahead on this one because I was just having so much fun making it. And also this is one where I've done a previous video 
uh, talking about how I am challenging myself to make these blocks with just the charm packs. So I'm not buying any background fabric on it. And the, like, look, it's so pretty and it's gonna make a beautiful quilt. I think I'm definitely someone though who just, I love the final result of a solid, a quilt made with solids, but I don't love working with them. And I thought this one might be a little bit different just because, you know, it was gonna be a little bit of a challenge uh, in terms of making it from the charm squares. Also, y'all know I don't like cutting big pieces of fabric, so I thought this would be perfect. And I will say I have really enjoyed that part of this. Like I can just sit with my rotating cutting mat on my coffee table while watching TV and cut. So I think this might actually be my top contender for finishing this one before the end of the year because I'm, I actually have made a lot more progress on it than I'm remembering. And it's turning out great. Like the challenge has been worth it. I think Kimberly Jolly from Fat Quarter Shop, she actually did the same thing. And it's so funny because I promise it, it was my own original idea that I was going to use the charm bag squares. And then she did the same thing. So um, all I can say is great minds. <laughs> but yeah, look how pretty that is. It's really going to be a beautiful quilt. Definitely more modern than I typically do but it is gorgeous. Okay, now pulling all of these out makes me think, you know what, maybe this is the one. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I'm almost halfway. That's actually really encouraging. This is another one I don't have a backing for, which is crazy because I feel like I have so many backings in my cabinet that I keep all my backings in so I don't know what they're supposed to go to but <laughs> I guess none of these projects that I've showed you <laughs> all right this one haven't started yet so I know I shouldn't be tempted but I am this is the swoon pattern by Camille Ross Kelly I cannot believe I've never made this quilt because I feel like this is really what launched her into fame and success but I love this quilt it's beautiful and then this is the lighthearted collection from her I have already made a quilt with this and so I think that's also my hesitation with this is I've I made a baby quilt earlier this year with lighthearted um, and it was fat quarter friendly so I had a fat quarter bundle and used the fabrics I thought would be best for that one in the baby quilt and then saved the ones I thought would look best for this quilt and it's so pretty like the fabric's beautiful the quilt pattern's beautiful this i got for binding see i was really motivated at one point i went ahead and got the binding and then this is background fabric that i would be using for it so it's it is really ready to go i need to check my backing cabinet i cannot remember if i have backing for this i feel like i do not just because these big fat quarter bundles they are pretty pricey so i think my thought was well I'll just get the bundle for now and then I'll get backing later but this was actually another one I thought would be great with cuddle because I used cuddle on the back of the baby quilt that I made with this in like a light pink and it was so so soft and beautiful so thoughts on this one I don't know do I dare start a quilt I haven't even started but another thing too and back to the idea of like how how efficient can I be the rest of the year I have a feeling just looking at this, it's going to go pretty quickly. So I'm wondering if maybe I do this and I do this. I can knock out two quilts by the end of the year. And also, I know this is like, it doesn't read Christmas, but it does have some like, you know, greens and reds in it. So maybe, maybe I can enjoy that the month of December and then have it ready to go for the new year. That could be fun. Just some ideas. All right, this one is a sore subject. <laughs> this is my Socialites 2 quilt. Um, I actually don't really even love this fabric anymore. I don't, I th and I think that's part of what is holding me back on this. The biggest thing though, that is holding me back on this one 
is Hannah Catherine, who had been quilting for, I'm fairly certain, like only a couple of months at the time I started this, decided, had the audacity to decide she was going to make the three inch finished square, or three inch squares. Like, look how tiny the, <laughs> these pieces are. And honestly, they're not bad. So here, let me show you all of the blocks that I have done. And this is another one where I kind of forget that, yeah, I made some good progress on it. So I'm not, I don't know. I just feel like I put blood, sweat, and tears into this. So I'm not in a position where I just want to like call this one quits and donate it or something. I'm just not there. Also, this was really before I knew more about color theory. So I hate this block. <laughs> I would need to redo it. Um, that's the other thing is the idea of redoing it. Or I don't know, maybe I should keep it in there because it's a good memory of like where I was in my quilting expertise when making this. But um, yeah, like they're, they're pretty blocks, not thrilled on the color placement for all of these. What is going on here? Okay. Yeah, I have a lot of blocks done. I can't abandon this. This has to get done. This one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Hmm, I cannot remember how many blocks total, but this is also one because it's smaller. I have all of my fabric for this. So um, I have the layer cake, I have my background fabric, and then I, I'm gonna have to go and measure these because I don't remember what I bought each for. But I think one of these was supposed to be a binding, one of, and then these were also supposed to be like the setting fabric and then a backing. I'm truly not sure. But I don't know, well, these, these fabrics are pretty. I think it's the yellow I don't like. I don't love yellow. I like gold, but I'm, I'm picky about yellow. So I don't know, thoughts, should I just, I, f I feel like this is actually the one that because it's haunting me, I need to just finish it and just like close this chapter. <laughs> and it's a free pattern and I have all the fabric for it. I'm fairly certain I'm more than halfway on this, if not two thirds of the way done. So it's, it, I think it would be crazy of me to stop. But, oh, these three inch blocks, they're just, they're tough. And this is also one that I am coloring as I go. So that also makes it difficult. And there's only so many, you know, fabrics in the layer cake in terms of getting like that contrast I liked that block. I remember that was the second block. This one was hard. This was, this is a pretty egregious miss here, but <laughs> that's what you get when you've been quilting for like three months. <laughs> you decide to make three inch blocks. I did not understand the implications of that choice when I made it. I think I was just thinking, oh, I don't have to buy as much fabric, so I'm gonna make the small ones. <laughs> so naive. I loved actually this block a lot more than I thought I would. That's so pretty. And this one was another really sad attempt. Actually, it was a valiant attempt. It was a sad execution. <laughs> so I don't know. Love would love to hear your thoughts on this, especially from people who have been in a similar situation. Is it something I should abandon? Should I just grit my teeth and finish it and maybe be happier with it than, it than I think I will? Or should I just save this beautiful fabric, like the scraps and then the background and these other fabrics for something else? Let me know. And just for a fair accounting of my projects, I am also working on the 2024 Designer Mystery Block of the Month from Fat Quarter Shop. This will obviously not be done by the end of the year, but it is something I'm working on and that will be taking up some of my time. So I'm really loving this. This is the beautiful setting pattern. And then there's a new block each month. I also bought the backing for this. So I have all of my fabric. And yeah, this has been a lot of fun. I've also signed up for Gosh, I think it's two other blocks of the month. One is the Tula Pink, which I believe starts in October. 
it's the I think it's called the dragon fruit one but really really pretty I just really admire Tula as an artist and the work that she does so um, I've just never like been able to put her fabrics together in a way that makes sense for me so I really appreciate Fat Quarter Shop doing that <laughs> for those of us who are more traditional piecers because I think it works really really well so I'm excited to work on that and then I have another one that's like applique heavy and I cannot remember any of the details about it right now but I think it starts late like later in the year so again not something I'm going to consider in terms of like finished projects for this year but gives you an accurate picture of how many things I have going on at once <laughs> also here is my backing for my 2024 designer mystery block of the month just in case you aren't participating and or you didn't get this just so you know what it looks like this was another one that I felt like the images online didn't do it justice. Like it's just way prettier in person. This entire fabric line is just way, way, way prettier in person. It's just, it's so much richer. Like it read kind of like country to me on the internet and there's nothing wrong with country, but I am just not typically into that aesthetic for myself. I can appreciate it in other people, but for me, I like things a little more, um, just like chic if that makes sense but this I think is just beautiful um I'm I've been so happy with this fabric it really has surprised me how much I love it the last quilt I'm going to show you is going to be a surprise but I'm going to tease it because this is the backing and that's the background fabric just a bleached white Bella solid this is going to be used for my new quilt pattern which I'm super excited to release and I'm actually really close on finishing it so um, this actually will be the next quilt that I make because I have everything the pattern is written it is all laid out like all my blocks are laid out it's just really a matter of like stitching everything up together so I am pretty close on that and super excited to share it with you I will give you one more hint it is layer cake friendly layer cakes are my favorite pre-cut so I definitely wanted to make something that had that in mind. So this will be the next quilt, but I just wanted to share this with you because this needs to be accounted for when we make decisions that this is a project we're gonna have to complete. Last project I wanted to talk to you about is my Christmas quilt. This one's pretty funny because <laughs> this is the reverse where I have the backing, but I don't have any of the fabric for the piecing. I believe this is the Joy line by Laundry Basket Quilts. I thought this was just like one of the most beautiful Christmas lines I had ever seen. Yep. Um, and I love how it's just not overtly Christmas. I think it's just so gorgeous. So I got this when I was in Charleston at a quilt shop in Somerville and figured it would be just easy to pick this up. And then I think I'm gonna grab like a half yard bundle of the rest of this collection to make a quilt. Um, so it's so pretty. I actually changed my mind because I was originally going to be making a Lori Holt quilt. I believe it was the hometown holiday sampler for my Christmas quilt this year, but I just fell in love with this fabric line so much it made me change my mind. So anyway, this is the other quilt. I, I am fairly certain I'm still going to do this this year. It'll probably be my last quilt of the year. But again, something to consider is that I haven't purchased the rest of the fabric. So um, in thinking about budgeting, because I have so many other quilts that I have everything I need, I'm wondering, should I finish those? And then maybe I don't make a Christmas quilt this year. I don't know. But I just I love that tradition for myself to make a Christmas quilt every year. So I think we can make it work, but <laughs> something to consider. You know, as project managers, we always have to, you know, make these decisions based on trade-offs and cost benefit. And so that is why I wanna give you all the facts. All right, now we're moving into the next category in terms of what order should I send my finished quilt tops to the long armor? <laughs> this one has been sitting for a hot minute. I started this one actually a really long time ago. This was probably in my first five quilts that I made. And it is from a pattern, I believe it's the Lighthouse pattern from Camille. And I made it because I missed out on Nantucket Summer because I was still new at that time. And gosh, this needs some, some help. But 
Anyway, I was new to quilting at the time, and so I didn't quite realize how, how the fabric consumerism cycle <laughs> works <laughs> in that for some collections, they sell out really quickly. So anyway, I started on this and I just used solids to make it. And it did turn out nicely. It took me forever to finish it because again, I think it was because there was solids and I wasn't having as good of a time with it because it just visually wasn't as stimulating as some of the others. I did, however, I was so proud of myself for this. This was like the last Nantucket Summer fabric that was available. So Nantucket Summer did make it into this quilt. This is the backing and then I was gonna do a striped binding on it. Um, I thought this would be great because it's just a little more masculine or gender neutral than some of the quilts I typically make. So um, yeah, I still really like it. It's just because I think it's just not as exciting to me visually. That's why it has sat for a little bit. Um, but I also, I want to see this quilt finish. Like, you know, I worked hard on it and I, I put a lot into it and it definitely needs some cleanup. Of course, I will not send it to my long armor like this. Do not worry. But yeah, it's been sitting there for a while and it has everything ready to go. And it's, it is nice. It is nice. It's a nice quilt. So consider that also in the Camille category this I made with I believe it was her dwell line and this is actually a really big quilt but I was so proud of this one I did like a scrappy inner border with the low volume fabrics from the collection um, and actually I've messed up really horribly there so I might want to address that now that I have a little bit more skill but anyway it's a really pretty quilt it's not complicated it went really quickly I think it's from it's a Sherry and Chelsea pattern a quilting life pattern and I think it's called beach day um, but this was just so fun because it utilized pre-cut so you only had to use like charm packs and then also a jelly roll and it went quickly and it was really fun to make um, so it's it's a beautiful quilt and I chose that pattern because I loved this fabric so much and I wanted to showcase how beautiful the fabric was so I didn't want like tiny piecing because I didn't want to lose the fabric patterns in the quilt I wanted to, to showcase it so um, this gives you an idea a little bit of what we're working with here and I also do have the backing for this this is also from the dwell line it's so beautiful and a rarity for me I already have my cup binding so I mean this one's really ready to go I think the thing that has held me back on sending this one to the long armor is it is a big quilt I cannot remember how big it is off the top of my head but it's it's fairly large so you know larger quilts mean more expensive quilting so it's beautiful it's also very springy, so that's another thing I'm thinking maybe I hold off a little longer on it because it is so spring. Maybe send this like March of next year. I don't know. I'm thinking this one might be the last one I send out of my completed quilt tops just because of that, but it is so pretty. My final quilt top, <laughs> this poor quilt top, my final, final quilt top that I wanted to share with you. This is a mysterious quilt. I believe it is from Doug Lecco of Antler Quilt Designs. And it turned out really beautifully. I This is one that I bought because I just really liked the fabric. Um, and I'm not gonna do it justice by just showing it to you on the table. It's really something you need to see like fully fully hung up but it was one of those quilts that you made it's made up of two different blocks so this is one of the blocks or maybe yeah and then like this is another and you just turn them throughout the or no hold on I'm trying to remember because I remember making yeah made this I think this is this you can't see that this is one block and then this is another block and is it that way the whole way through i think it might be oh sorry i keep moving you yeah and you just turn it and so if you turn it in like this it makes this little star 
so it's, it's really pretty, but basically the point is you can make a ton of different designs with that by just like changing your blocks up. I just loved this fabric. Look how pretty this is. This border and like the inner border. This is, I believe, a Riley Blake fabric from last year or the year before. Needs a really good pressing, needs some cleanup. But I was actually thinking this may be the quilt that I send in first, just because it reads a little bit more fall for me, especially when you take into consideration that this is my backing and then this is my binding, which I love. Oh my gosh, taking out these quilts makes me remember how much I loved them. And I still love them. So consider consider that in your judgment, but I think this is a, oh, it's called like Gingham Fields, I think. That's what I've been calling this one, the mysterious Gingham Fields quilt. I think this one may be my first one to the long armor and because I'm asking you this because I have a very big credit with them right now because of my missing quilt so, <laughs> um, so they have said that I can send them something else in its place so I've already paid for that so that's great I kind of feel like now at this point I kind of feel like I get free quilting even though it's not free I paid for it but I am thinking that may be it I don't know if you, don't, if you disagree convince me otherwise but I think I might get this one cleaned up and sent out. As always, thank you so much for joining me here today in my craft room office, storage unit, music space, litter box space, everything else. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here with me today in my craft room. It is always such a privilege to get to spend some time with you. And I am so honored that you are spending valuable minutes out of your day with me here in my craft room. So thank you. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, leave me a comment and tell me why. I'm always looking to improve this channel and everything that comes out of my Edie's Craft Room company. And as always, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Happy crafting. Bye-bye.